Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper, along with Tony Hager. Welcome to GWN. Well, the Cadet World Championships are well underway, and the U.S. Greco squad is trying to figure out what went wrong. Over two days in Tbilisi, Georgia, only one American even reached the medal round. Pennsylvania's Jack Davis posted a 2-2 record at 58, but ultimately finished in fifth. Davis gave up two early takedown to turn combinations against Erbal Bakarov and was unable to make up the deficit. The final score, 8-1. It boosts my confidence a lot coming here and just being able to play, get in the top five is amazing for my first ever national competition and just being here is a great opportunity and just a really huge milestone for me. Is uh, the international experience, I mean it's your first one, so what was that like for you? I think it was a great experience coming out here, seeing what I need to work on and what I need to improve and just seeing how international competition is compared to the United States. So yeah, how would you compare the competition internationally to you know, the guys that you see in the U.S.? What kind of differences do you feel? There is a lot of differences, I would have to say, with style and all that. And like a lot more hand fighting has to do with it and just more physical. Davis came out of the tournament, two great victories. Won the first one on Criteria 7-7, seven to seven, then came out with a fall. Things were looking great, but he just, his, his semifinal match got down quick. He was up, you know, the, his opponent was up big early, so there's just no way coming back with that, with the offense. I mean, he tried it, but was able to, to capitalize on some of those big throws. Well, Peyton Omania was the only other American to pick up a win on day one, but lost in the quarters and fell to 11th at 63 kilos. Malik Johnson finished 10th at 50 kilos. He fell 6-1 in the opener against Toprak of Turkey. Rio Woods and Colton Schultz both dropped their first round match and were unable to crack the top 10. 2015 Triple Crown winner Moshe Schwartz fell to Armenia's Ashat Maktarian in the first round at 46. And three-time Fargo All-American Brandon Whitman also lost to Armenian in the opening round at 76. Clay Lott won his first match 8-2 at 76 kilos, but then dropped a 7-1 decision in the quarterfinals against Turkey. We talked with Coach Sean Sheldon. Yeah, it's just a tough tournament. I mean, this is the first world championship for, for most of them, and um, it's another level. <laughs> wow, these guys, that's all they do is Greco Roman. They've never touched the legs before, probably in their life. So, you know, right now, just talk to them about it. You know, they need to wrestle more Greco after high school. You know, you don't need to go after state championships. You need to focus on Greco if that's what they want to do. You know, so focus on Greco from February up until now would be a different story. You know, so they don't need to be doing freestyle and Greco. Just if they want to do, be a Greco guy, they need to focus on Greco for at least six to seven months out of the year. And then they can do the folk style during that folk style season. I mean, overall, nobody quit. Nobody got really beat up badly, you know, but um, it's just experience. And the cadets is a hard age group. You know, they kind of go on how they feel and don't listen to coaches too much. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's a growing experience, and, um, you know, I'm glad they came out here. I'm glad to hear, and I'm glad USI Wrestling supported them to come out here this year. I mean, Tony, you heard what Sean Sheldon said about our inexperience. He wasn't the only one. Here's Real Woods. Yeah, it was a new experience, but that's not my excuse. Uh, it was it was different because not everyone the United States isn't nowhere close to these foreigners, and I just wish that I could have had more experience with them. I adjusted. I tried to adjust as best as possible. Uh, I was really uh, surprised of how like he would really pressure on that arm, and I couldn't do anything with that underhook, so I had to get that out and work something else and uh, start sapping, working the head, working the other side, try to get to my two-on-ones and different things like that, but uh, it was just it was rough. Obviously, parterre has been a huge problem, and I don't know that that's going to go away, but we're struggling in every position at this level. Yeah, I mean, we talked to Timmy Hands, the five-point move. He thinks it's funding issue, or they're not pushing enough money to the Greco side of thing. There's lots of lots of things that uh, there could be issues. There's not enough Greco tournaments at a younger age, so just uh, need to try to keep that movement if we want really, really want to be good in Greco. If, if not, then don't, don't do anything. All right. All right. Next up, the Jay Robinson era is apparently over. We'll talk about the state of Gopher Wrestling. That's after the break. You're watching GWN, thanks to Barbarian Apparel.
Right now, get any large original or flatbread Supreme Pizza for only $13.99. Casey's, famous for pizza. At Cookies, sauces and seasonings are business, but food is our passion. Our secret ingredient is Cookies Flavor Enhancer and All-Purpose Seasoning. It makes pretty much everything taste better. You can use it on meats and in marinades, veggies and seafood. Try it on pasta and even popcorn. Pick up a bottle at your local grocer and enhance the flavor of your favorite foods. Cookies For more ideas and recipes, visit cookiesbbq.com. Cookies is the one. generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so, defend what you have built. We head to the University of Minnesota. Just four months into a prescription drug scandal, 30-year head wrestling coach Jay Robinson has been fired. Robinson was first placed on administrative leave after accusations that his wrestlers were using and selling the prescription drug Xanax. Though Robinson reported the allegations, it was not enough for the new athletic director, Mark Coyle, to announce the firing at a press conference just last Wednesday. You know, based on the university's investigation and through my own conversations with Coach Robinson, I've decided to terminate his contract with the University of Minnesota effective immediately. I'm terminating Coach Robinson's contract because he was not forthcoming with his superiors when reporting his suspicions about selling and abusing prescription medication. While he did report drug suspicions, he chose not to share many other important details about what he knew. Furthermore, he did not fully cooperate with our investigation into the matter. He did not meet with us for interviews promptly and when he did, he did not answer some of our most critical questions. As I've said from the beginning of this investigation, I have a great deal of respect for Coach Robinson and what he's accomplished during his 30 years at the University of Minnesota. That, cannot, that respect cannot excuse his conduct in this instance. Brandon Egham, who has been serving as our acting head coach during the past several weeks, will be our wrestling program's interim head coach for this year. You know, I've known Coach Robinson since 2001. You know, he and I work closely together. And, and again, he was not forthcoming to us during our investigation. He did report the suspicion to his supervisors, but he did not tell them everything he knew. And he was not forthcoming. When we had a chance to meet with him, you know, he did not answer many of our critical questions. What did he know? When did he know? Those type of things. Again, you know, he had, you know, multiple opportunities to visit with us, and he refused to answer many of those questions. Based on the University of Minnesota police report and the Office of General Counsel and their investigation, you know, when they were made aware of the allegation, uh, you know, they acted in the best manner of the university. But the problem is he did not share all the information he had. Well, our wrestlers will go through our university uh, process here, and, and because of privacy laws, I can't get into the specifics of that. But, again, you know, we want to make sure people are honest and accountable. Uh, we, we've had um, our Office of Student Conduct and Acting Integrity is visiting with our wrestlers now. I've not, been, I've not been part of those conversations, but they have been meeting with those people on campus. Again, I wasn't here till June 1st, uh, so I, I'm not aware of all the emails of what happened. You know, I can tell you what I was updated on when I got here on June 1st moving forward. I think any department, you always look at how you do things, and you always want to make sure you do things uh, in a very transparent and honest way. And uh, are we changing specific policies at this time? We haven't had that conversation. And again, I think in you know, college athletics over the last you know, 18 to 24 months has focused on student athlete welfare and how critical that is for all of student athletes competing across all divisions. And that's something that we all need to continue to work on and look into. Are they disappointed? Do they kind of see it coming? 
Well, you know, I think if you put yourself in their shoes, you know, that, that's something that's been a big part of our program. So, again, you'd ask, you know, visit with them, but I'm sure they were surprised. But I think, uh, you know, again, we talk about being truthful and being honest, and those are very important to us. And, and again, in this case, that didn't happen. You know, I've been very in, impressed with, with Brandon and Luke during this transitional period, and, and obviously we'll give them a full evaluation, uh, but we want to get our program. We expect all of our programs to compete at a high level, and, and we expect the same from wrestling. He's our interim head coach, and we'll continue to evaluate him and Luke in our program as we move forward. Tony, i got to ask you, where are you at on this? I, I think we all saw this coming. I mean, Jay clearly didn't follow the rules or, or the, the rules that Minnesota has in place for administrators, um, but I think he did what he needed to do. He got everything. I mean, in his mind, he got all the kids tested. He was trying to basically be the police of it, but in today's world, you just can't do that. I mean, we see all, all the time students – suing the university so there's rules that you have to place on your athletes so you don't get sued so something tells me though that there's going to be a lawsuit in this deal well minnesota will move forward under brandon agum with an interim tag to that title of head coach what kind of ability will he have to recruit and retain talent to be able to compete in the big 10 you know, I, I don't think Egham will be the, the, the head coach going forward. I mean, I, I think that they are going to look for maybe a bigger name. Uh, it, it's going to be hard for him to recruit, I feel like, because of this whole situation. Um, you know, they have they did pick up a recruit, which we'll talk about later in the show. But I think uh, this does hurt them. We just won't know for a while how difficult it will be to recruit. But in my eyes, I mean, put him with, you know, Smith, Brand, Sanderson, and Egham, you know, that, that name just doesn't come off the tip of the tongue as somebody that you're going to get commits to. All right, stay tuned, wrestling fans. Up next, a very special one-on-one -on -one with a Canadian Olympic gold medalist. That's after the break. This portion brought to you by Nike Wrestling. Homemade crust. Fresh meats and vegetables. 100% real mozzarella. There ain't nothing like the smell of a homemade pizza when it comes out of the oven. Of course, those pine tree air fresheners smell pretty darn good, too. Casey's, famous for pizza. Introducing your favorite dip on a pizza. Pick up the all-new spinach artichoke chicken pizza today. Yellow Blue wants to show you global energy demands are expanding at an alarming rate. Power grids in the U.S. are aging while coal plants continue to close at record rates. Utility rates are at an all-time high and there's no end in sight. If this concerns you, call Yellow Blue, delivering products and services that are not only green but cost-effective. You can be independent, safe, and secure. We'll show you how at yellowbluetech.com. Welcome back to Global Wrestling News, making wrestling great again. We've got a very special guest. She's recently became just the third Canadian wrestler ever to win Olympic gold, doing so at 75 kilos. Erica Weeb joins the program. Erica, congratulations. How are you? Hi, Scott. I'm good. How are you? Uh, well, obviously, <laughs> you owned 75 kilos this year, kid, and and what a job you did making all of Canada proud. It was the fourth gold medal for the country, but more importantly, it was a statement to your 27 years on planet Earth. It was a neat thing. What did it feel like for you? 
man, you know what? I woke up that morning and, uh, and I just, I know I really felt unbeatable. Um, but for me, that feeling is just, you know, I just knew I could, I knew I, I knew I was going to have my best day and I never thought about what the outcome was going to be, but I just, you know, I thought about every moment about just being present in the moment. And I remember being in the back and just like, just having this big smile on my face as I was preparing to warm up and getting ready to walk out for my first match. And it was, it's just been such a surreal time, you know, like I'm still the same person um, that I was three weeks ago, but um, you know, that I've been for the last nine years, you know, I've, I've, I have all these really strong values and, um, and, you know, I've, I've really committed to and really found out who I am as a person, but, but now it's like, I have this gold medal. And so people look at me differently and um it's really interesting well congratulations on that let's take everybody back a little bit tell us where you started in the sport how old were you yes yeah, so i started in grade nine um i was 14 years old i was always uh, a physical young girl and i loved getting into sports and i loved getting sweaty and just going after it and uh there was a co-ed wrestling team offered at my high school, and I thought that would be really fun to try. It seems, you know, Canada has been tough in, uh, in women's freestyle for quite some time. Uh, is wrestling across the country of Canada gaining in popularity because of uh, performances like you? I mean, I think, I would hope so. I mean, it's, you know, I remember being young in the sport and, and having a lot of role models growing up. Um, you know, Christine Nordhagen, Ohanoa Akufu, Tanya Rabik, and uh, the list continues. And, and, you know, having these women compete internationally and just be so tough. Uh, my first my first wrestling coach was Laura Jones, who was, a, you know, a 72-kilo wrestler just like me. And um, you know, I always had these really strong female role models in the sport. And so it was really easy for me to, to get into it and to, to love it right away. Obviously, the gold medal at the Olympics is a high point for anybody's career, but uh, 27 years old, do we get the privilege of seeing you compete for another four years and, and uh, attempt another gold medal run? A hundred percent. I had more fun wrestling on, on August 18th at the Games than I've ever had before. And, uh, and wrestling is pretty fun when, well, wrestling's fun, but it's also, you know, you, you like kind of hate to love it or love to hate it. <laughs> it's not easy, but um, I love the grind of wrestling. And uh, and I stepped on the mats at the Olympic Games, and, and I was just so ready for, you know, the, all of the last nine years of work that I've been training and competing in Calgary to culminate in that one joyous moment. And I was not going to let any result dictate how I felt on that day. And um, I'm so excited to what the next four years of training are going to be. All right, so the, we've been saying your name in the U.S. as Weebe. It's actually just Weeb, right? Yeah. Okay, but you are also known as a Beweeber. Uh, Who gave well, you that nickname? I have a hashtag Beweeb. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it was actually like a super fan in Canada, like the guy behind Forty Nine North Wrestling. He, I guess, he was one of the first Beweebers because when I went to my first Senior World Championship. He was like, I be weeb. <laughs> so I think, uh, you know, I think a lot of people believed in me before I really believed in myself. And um, that was, that was, you know, one of the keys to kind of gain the confidence that I had to, to wrestle my best. Erica, yeah. I can't congratulate you enough. We're so proud of you on behalf of the sport of wrestling. We have some wonderful ambassadors. You are one of them. And uh, I, I'm just so grateful you're a part of the sport. Your performance in Rio was outstanding. But the road to there, perhaps that's the even better story. But, man, it ended up uh, nice and bright for you with a beautiful gold medal. Congratulations. Thank you, Scott. It's been great. I mean, Tony, I know we were all disappointed on how things worked out for Adeline, but really happy to see Erica Weeb win gold. Yeah, great girl. I, I, I'm probably not as happy, maybe, for a lot of Americans probably wouldn't be happy about this. I mean, if this is not red, white, and blue, I'm not too happy about it. But Adeline Gray, I think, uh, will come back from her, her performance in Rio. Uh, hopefully, uh, she can get past Erica Weeb, who's obviously uh, got the got the hot hand right now. I tell you what, after that interview, you can call me Abba Weaver. All right, quick hits. That's next. You're watching GWN. Thanks to McBride Match.
Yellow Blue wants to show you three great ways to make your home more comfortable. Install a hybrid solar home system, utilizing solar power in the day, battery power at night. Install a solar attic fan to reduce heat and moisture from your attic. And install a multi-layer reflective insulation blanket in your attic to reduce the cost of heating and cooling. Conserve energy, save money, protect the environment with Yellow Blue Ecotech. Learn more ways at yellowbluetech.com. Speed the Sauce Man here. While sauces and seasonings are our business, food is our passion. And we've been helping make your favorite foods taste better for years. Try our wings and things hot sauce and everything from chicken wings to your morning eggs. Use it in recipes like spicy chicken noodle dinner, party dip, and buffalo chicken pizza. It's not only delicious, but it's award winning too. Wings and things recently earned first place honors in the hot sauce category at the National Barbecue Association's Award of Excellence competition. Remember, smart cookies use cookies. Proudly made in the USA, Danmar offers incredible protection and customized gear. I'm Tony Ramos, NCAA champion and world team member. Take my word that Danmar Warrior headgear is the best. It's what I use. Look for my limited edition signature headgear at a retailer near you or online at danmarwarrior.com. I'm a world-class warrior and you can be one too with Danmar. Follow me on Twitter at T underscore Ram 133 or on my website teamramos.co. All right, time for quick hits. The Rutgers Athletic Department has scheduled yet another outdoor dual meet for 2017. It's the Big Ten Battle in the Bronx. It'll feature the Scarlet Knights and the Terps of Maryland in a football wrestling doubleheader. Where, Tony? Yankee Stadium. That's what I said. Yankee Stadium, baby. I'm loving it. I mean, I'm all for outdoor wrestling, Tony, but New York in November might be a stretch. What are the chances this thing actually happens? Yeah, go back, going back to the grapple with the gridiron in Iowa City last year, everybody was worried about it being in Iowa, but this is in New York. Uh, it snows a lot out there. So, I mean, in the, in the, the boroughs of the city, I think uh, we're going to see some snow, but I hope not because that's just going to be a great opportunity for our sport to be on Yankee Stadium. I hope I can get, attend the event. Well, I tell you what, I know I will. U.S. non-Olympic weight team trials are set for New York City November 9th through the 12th at the Athletic Club there, which will coincide with the now famous Bill Farrell International. Wrestlers who competed in the 2016 Olympic Games in Rio are not eligible to compete at the non-Olympic weight world championships in Budapest and therefore cannot enter the U.S. non-Olympic weight trials. I, I mean, I've been pumped about this since we've had, uh, we talked about it on Takedown Radio, I know, months ago about that. And uh, some guys that I'm interested in seeing at 61, Nico Megalutis, Nishant Garrett, Joe Colon, uh, mm. Hammer, Matt McDonough might be uh, back in that way. He's been suffering from an injury. So uh, that weight class is going to be absolutely loaded. I'm sure I left it a lot of people off. Well, you alluded to this earlier in the show. There is a new commit for the University of Minnesota. Three-time Minnesota State champ Brent Jones has committed to the Gophers, doing so on Wednesday evening. Jones is number 99 overall in the class of 2017. It looks like recruiting isn't going to be hurt by the J. Rob News, Tony. Well, I mean, this is an in-state guy, so it probably didn't cost a lot of money to get him, in-state tuition. We we won't really see the effect of this J. Rob firing in this situation until probably 2017, 2018 season, so we can't really say that this is affecting it until you know we, we get some out-of-state guys that maybe commit. Then we say, that's not an issue. All right. Another three-time state champ has made his decision. It's Parker Phileas became the first class of 2017 commitment for the Boilermakers of Purdue. Phileas ranked 62nd overall prospect in the senior class by Intermet. Erslin is building a storm there at Purdue. I mean, it, seemed like, it seems like he just has all the momentum with coaches, with athletes. I think he's going to be a force in the Big Ten, two to three 
years from now. He's got to he's got to get a big big recruit in. He's kind of getting these tweeners, but uh, you know this recruit round 41, 49 pounds for Montana. He's uh, that's a big recruit for them. Anything else, Tony? Nope. Good. That'll do it for this week's program. I'm Scott Casper for Tony Hager, Brad Johnson, and the balance here in our studios. We'll see you next week for another exciting edition of GWN. <laughs>